Once upon a time, a witch loved stories galore, and greedy as she was, she wanted more and more. When she saw that the librarian had stories of all kinds, she said, "I'll capture you. All your stories will be mine." There took place a curious chase through meadow, tree, and flower, till at last they ended up right at the witch's tower. Now poor Marion, the librarian, a prisoner she'll stay until the witch is happy and lets Marion go away. Hi, it's snowing outside, and snow always makes me feel like Christmas is almost here. You know, I've been looking through Kerfumbly's trunk to see if I could find some Christmas decorations for the dungeon, but these were the only things I could find. I did find this big red ribbon. Wouldn't that look pretty on a Christmas wreath? Oh, but I don't have any Christmas wreath. Oh, and here's something else I found—a Christmas stocking. But there's not a single thing inside. And I also found some pretty wrapping paper and ribbons and bows. But you know, I don't have a single present to wrap. You know, this really isn't enough to decorate a whole dungeon. But maybe if we put these things in the Once Upon a Time machine, we would get a Christmas story. Let's try that. Put in the bow and the stocking. And all the decorations. Turn the machine on. <laughs> and it's called "On Christmas Eve" by Margaret Wise Brown. It was the middle of the night, and night of all nights, it was Christmas. The children couldn't sleep; they had lain in bed for hours, listening and pretending. They saw reindeer, and sugar plums, and angels, and stars, and wise men. Then one of the children said. Let us all go down and touch the tree, and make a wish before we go to sleep. So very quietly in the large cold playroom, they took their clothes under the covers and dressed themselves. They put on their sweaters and slippers and socks and bathrobes. In the big quiet house where the people were sleeping. The children got out of their beds. Then into the upstairs hall they went, quietly, almost without breathing, they went, past the door where mother and father were sleeping. So quietly they went through the hall. No sound, until the top stair creaked. Then they all stood terribly still and listened. No sound but their own thumping hearts. And now they were creeping downstairs in the middle of the night, night of all nights, Christmas night. Out the window it even looked like Christmas, the quietest night in the world. With snow falling so softly, so quietly. Great green evergreen branches on the stairs, and red holly berries in the hall. Downstairs it was still warm, the warm smells of Christmas, pine trees and wood smoke, and oh, wonderful smell of Christmas seals and packages not yet opened. The night before Christmas, Christmas Eve. Quietly listening, listening all over, with eyes and ears and hands and feet, they went down into the warm, dark, pine-scented hall. They came to the living room door. 
they listened. Beyond the window pane, white flakes in the blue night, the snow fell down. They couldn't even hear it. A piece of wood creaked in the dying fire. Then the children went into the room and stood close together on the soft rug in front of the fire. They couldn't speak or move. It was as though a magic had come true. The Christmas tree was all there, trimmed with shiny glints of red and blue and green that flickered in the dying firelight. Silver and gold tinsel hung all over the tree, loads and loads of tinsel, gold tinsel. And in front of the chimney, where they could reach out and touch them, hung their stockings, filled with little white bundles and tangerines and strange shapes. If they reached out their hands, they could touch them. Under the tree were more packages, and there was one big package. They all saw it. It looked like, it looked like an electric train. It went all around the tree. They all saw it. No one spoke. No one moved. And then, suddenly in the night, through the soft snow falling outside, the voices came. They really came, those voices, so quietly in the night, singing. children ran to the window. Dark figures were moving outside in the snow. The dark figures carried a lantern. Why, they were grown-up people singing. The children listened. The sound of the voices seemed to fall with the snow. The song stopped. There was that quietness of snow again. The grown-up people moved around outside, dark figures against the white snow. The Christmas carolers, they were the Christmas carolers, grown-up people who went from house to house singing Christmas songs on Christmas Eve. The children quickly turned toward the stairs. They went up the stairs almost running, only as quietly still as they could. And they jumped into bed with their clothes on. Their hearts were pounding. Then the singing began again. Oh, wasn't that a pretty story? You know what I think I'll do? I think I'll just wrap this story up and give it to Kerfumbly as a Christmas present. I think she'd like that, don't you? Put some pretty paper on it and a nice bow. There. Let's go call her, all right? Wait a minute. I don't want to give this away. I want to keep it for myself. Of course, this is the time of year when you're supposed to give things to other people, isn't it? But I just like this too much to give it away. Besides, Kerfumbly probably won't give me anything anyway. Of course, if I was nice to her, 
she might be nice to me. What do you think? Would Kerfumbly like a present? She would, wouldn't she? Shall we give her this one? Okay, come and help me call her. You're sure I ought to give this away? Okay, let's call her really loud. Ready? Left and right and Zachary Zoo, here's a story just for you. <gasps> Why, you're not Kerfumbly. Oh, my, no. I'm Kerfumbly's cousin, Fumblecrumbs. Well, are you a witch, too? <laughs> Well, not exactly. I'm more like a fairy godmother. Oh. Well, what are you doing here? Well, whenever Kerfumbly wants something nice to be done, she calls me, and I do it for her. Why doesn't she do the nice thing herself? Oh, well, Kerfumbly's afraid that if anybody saw her doing anything nice, they wouldn't believe that she was a witch anymore. But sometimes... All that feeling of niceness starts to grow inside of her, and she feels nicer and nicer until finally she just has to do something good. And then she calls me. And you do the nice thing for her. Yes, and today she said, if Marion calls me, do something nice for her. Really? Well, in that case, I'm glad I called her. Well, what are you going to do? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. And that's not all. Oh, fumble crumbs. Why, it's beautiful. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Now watch. A tree and presents. Are they for me? All for you. I have a present, too, for Kerfumbly. Would you give it to her and, and tell her thank you for me? Yes, I'll tell her. Oh, I've had such a good time being here, but I do have to go now. It is nice to be nice, isn't it? It is nice to be nice. Would you come back next time and we'll get another Christmas story for Kerfumbly? See you then. Once upon a time, a witch loved stories galore. And greedy as she was, she wanted more and more. When she saw that the librarian had stories of all kinds, she said, I'll capture you, all your stories will be mine. There took place a curious chase through meadow, tree, and flower Till at last they ended up right at the witch's tower Now poor Marion the librarian, a prisoner she'll stay Until the witch is happy and lets Marion go away